The 37th Circuit Court is now in session with the Honorable Brian K. Kirkham presiding, calling case 2023-1879-DC, Shelby Platypores versus Corey Werner. Today is Monday, November 6, 2023 at 1029 a.m. Good morning to all of you. Court will note that this matter was adjourned from uh, two weeks ago to allow the plaintiff to uh, get representation. She has uh, Ms. Moss has uh, filed an appearance on behalf of Legal Services. The matter is before the court on the defendant's motion for dismissal for lack of subject matter jurisdiction and for dismissal, dismissal of default in this matter. I do note uh, that the uh, plaintiff, again, has filed their response and has stated that the court should contact the Alabama court uh, pursuant to Michigan Compile Laws 722.1206 parens 2, and the court would note as well, pursuant to 722.1204 parens 2, as it relates to temporary emergency jurisdiction. Uh, so I guess that's at least your request, uh, Ms. Moss, in this matter that the court do that, and I guess that's preliminary to anything else. Yes, Your Honor, and I'll just note that, uh, yeah, Okay. I understand, uh, Mr. Warner, what they're asking is that, uh, again, under the statute, the court, when it's requested, the court's required to communicate with the other court uh, to see who wants to take jurisdiction in the matter. Yes, I understand. Okay. I do want to correct, I guess, uh, either Ms. Redman or Ms. Moss. A couple things, though, as I note, as I'm reading your answer and reading the motions, uh, do you, in fact, acknowledge that Alabama is, in fact, the home state of the minor child? Yes, we do. Okay. And, uh, again, that the plaintiff did file for custody in Michigan on or about uh, July 14, 2023. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that so when I talk to the Alabama judge that we have, again, those facts uh, in place. So, what we're going to do is uh, I will uh, adjourn this matter without date. I will make communication with the Alabama judge. And then what we'll do is contact you at that point, And we'll probably come in for a status conference in which we'll address the motion at that time after I had a chance to speak to the other judge. Okay. Okay. Any, anything else, Mr. Warner? Um, yes, yes, Your Honor. Uh, from, from my understanding of uh, emergency jurisdiction, that'd be for the plaintiff or the defendant, whoever's filing in that state, would be so they could get temporary jurisdictions to get sole custody. Um, Shelby and I was never married, so I don't I don't really feel like it's necessary because automatically as sole custody. OK, well, temporary Temporary emergency jurisdiction doesn't just simply uh, isn't confined just to that. OK, uh, in fact, let me. I will. Read particularly for so that you have that. From the statute. OK, it says here that a and this is uh, this 722.2. 1204 states uh, that a court of this state has temporary emergency jurisdiction of the child is present in this state and the child has been abandoned or it is necessary in an emergency to protect the child because the child or a sibling or parent of the child is subjected to threatened and threat or threatened or mistreatment or abuse. And that is the basis on which they're stating um, temporary emergency jurisdiction. If you read their answer, you'll see that they have alleged that uh, abuse and uh, violence in this uh, particular matter. So, so the court is uh, on that basis is going to obviously communicate with the uh, with the Alabama court, and as stated under. Uh, uh, 722.1206. Obviously, the court uh, would uh, not exercise jurisdiction if it, another action has been commenced in the other court. And uh, so 
I know that you filed an action in the other court that the defendant has also filed in Michigan. So that is why the court at least needs to communicate with Alabama uh, to get those issues resolved. So that's what I'll do. We'll have you back in for a, a status conference at which time the court will address, uh, again, the determination between this court and the Alabama court. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. We'll end at uh, 1034 a.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. Okay, please unmute everybody. We're about to begin. Okay, just a second. The 37th Circuit Court is now in session with the Honorable Brian K. Kirkham presiding. It is Monday, November 6, 2023 at 101 p.m. And this is 2023-270-DM, Jessica Lamkin versus Clyde Lamkin, attorney core for plaintiff and attorney Bartell filling in for attorney Schaefer for defendant. Okay, good afternoon to all of you. Good afternoon. Good to you yeah. first, uh, Ms. Greenlee-Clore, uh, enlighten me what's uh, happening on your case. Um, yes, Your Honor, we, we participated in a long mediation on um, October 31st. We did rec come to a final agreement and a mediation agreement regarding all of the property issues. So it's my understanding that the property has been resolved. Um, the only issues remaining are uh, parenting time and child support. Okay. Mr. Bartell, is that your understanding? That'd be correct, Your Honor. Custody, uh, parenting time, and child support, yes. Okay. Um, I would note, Your Honor, that we are also still dealing with, there is still a default in place against Mr. Lampkin. Okay. Okay. What we'll do is we will uh, set the matter for trial. We'll be in touch with both of your offices and see when you're available, and we'll proceed with the trial at that time. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Anything else, Ms. greenlee -Clore? Um, I don't think so. Not at this time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all, and uh, we'll let you go. You have a good day. And just Thank one you. question, right. then. Should we set it for one or two days? I, I would say one day, Your Honor, since we're just dealing with the custody and parenting time issues. Mr. Bartell? Yeah, I think one day, and I guess if it rolls over, then you can just uh, add we'll on do, later. What we'll do is we'll set, it, we'll set it for a backup day, too, so that uh, we can clear your calendar, and then we can get it done. I don't want to do it and then have to wait a month in between or something of that nature. Sure. Okay. 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 Thank you. Have a good Please uh, mute just a moment. We go. The 37th Circuit Court is now in session with the Honorable Brian K. Kirkham presiding. It is Monday, November 13th, 2023 at 8.32 a.m. Good morning, Ms. Platic. Good morning, Judge. What would you give... Uh, you give him the day off again? Um, he didn't let us know until this morning, so I don't know what he's doing today. Oh, okay. But I'm here, so. Okay. Go ahead when you're ready. All right. Are you Mr. Dillard? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. This is Mr. Dillard of docket 2018-1873-DP. In this matter, Mr. Dillard failed to appear on August 17th of 2023 for a show cause before the referee. This is the first and only bench warrant with bond currently set at $500. Mr. Dillard reports no new employer, and the last payment made in this case was on May 19th of this year through income withholding. Friend of the court requests the next hearing be set for November 22nd at 845 before your honor. Okay. Mr. Dillard, uh, you're before the court charged with civil contempt of court duty or failure to appear at a prior hearing as a result of your failure to pay child support. The purpose of this hearing is to set a bond to assure your attendance at the next hearing on November 22nd, 2023 at 8.45 a.m. You will get notice of that in writing. Are you able to post a bond, sir? I interviewed today. I was I was celebrating last night, but then I ended up getting locked up. I knew my child support was getting high, and I was doing my best to apply for jobs, and I, I can't win some losers, so I'm here, I guess. You know, so I don't want to have any money. Okay. Well, because it is your first bench warrant, I'm taking that into consideration. And you did pay in um, up to May. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce your bond to the amount of $100. If you're able to post that, you'd be able to be released. Do you have any questions? No. 
Okay. Thank you, sir. You're free to go. Have a good day. Now before the court is Brandon Eggleston of two matters, their dockets 2018-916-DS and also docket 2018-2443-DP. In the 18-916 matter, this is the second bench warrant with bond currently set at $836. Mr. Eggleston failed to appear on October 12th of this year for a show cause before the referee. He reports he is self-employed the last payments made in both matters were on April 8th of 2023. He made those payments on his own. In the 182443 matter, this is the third bench warrant with bond currently set at $4,047. Again, he failed to appear on the 12th of um, October of this year for a show cause. And last payment was April 8th of 2023. Friend of the court requests in both matters, the next hearing be set for November 22nd at 845 before your honor. Okay, thank you. Mr. Eggleston, you're before the court, uh, a charge of civil contempt of court due to your failure to appear at a prior hearing as a result of your failure to pay child support. Purpose of this hearing is to set a bond that would assure your tenants at the next hearing on November 22nd, 2023 at 845 a.m. You will get notice of that in writing. Are you able to post a bond, sir? No, Your Honor. Okay. Well, you, you do owe a uh, sizable arrearage on, on these particular matters. Uh, on the uh, first on the first case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set your bond in the amount of two hundred dollars, and in the second, in the uh, that's the eighteen two four four three. I'm setting that bond in the amount of five hundred. If you're able to post that, you'd be able to be released. Do you have any questions? I'm not going to post bond, Your Honor. I already got a for Oklahoma too. Okay. Okay. We will see you back then on the twenty uh, second. Have a good day. You're free to go. Thank you. Anything else, Ms. Platic? That is okay. One moment, please. Yes, sir. The 37th Circuit Court is now in session with the Honorable Ryan P. Kirkham presiding. It is Wednesday, November 8th, 2023 at 8.32 a.m. Good morning, Mr. Chapman. Good morning, Your Honor. You can proceed when you're ready. Thank you. Is this Mr. Knickerbocker? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. Before the court is Thomas Knickerbocker of case 113150DM. Mr. Knickerbocker is here today after failing to appear before referee Couteau on May 4th, 2023. Bond is currently set at $500. This is the fifth bench warrant. He reports that he is employed at Russell Wireless. Last payment made on this account was in November of 2022. That was a $200 payment to resolve a previous bench warrant. Front of the court recommends that a reasonable bond be set in this matter and it be scheduled for hearing on November 15th, 2023 at 8 o'clock a.m. before this court. Thank you. Mr. Knickerbocker, you're before the court charged with civil contempt of court due to your failure to appear at a prior hearing as a result of your failure to pay child support. The purpose of this hearing is to set a bond that would assure your attendance at the next hearing on November 15th. 2023 at 8 o'clock a.m. You will get notice of that in writing. Are you uh, able to post a bond, sir? Um, if I make a phone call, maybe I don't. I'm not sure yet. Like I work, but I work for Verizon Wireless, which is Russell Cellular or Russell Wireless, and we we go out of state like maybe twice a month and work. Okay. How long have you been with Russell Wireless? I just transferred from American Interior. My my foster brother had got me this job, like helped me out. I've only been there for like now a month. Okay. I've only actually just got back from Minette, Missouri or whatever, working with them. Okay. Well, what yeah. I'm going to do is, uh, again, I'm going to, this is your fifth bench warrant. You haven't paid in uh, 
basically a year. So the court's taking that into consideration. I'm going to set your bond in the amount of $300. If you're able to post that, you'd be able to be released. Do you have any questions? No, sir. That's okay. for the whole entire. Oh, yeah, I do. That's for the entire, like the bond. Yes, that's for the bond. Okay. Correct. Okay. Right. Thank you, sir. You're free to go. Thank you. And now before the court is Travis Warges of case 16907DM. Mr. Warges is here today after failing to appear before referee Snyder on June 27th, 2023. Bond is currently set at $14,688. This is the 13th bench warrant. He, <clears throat> excuse me, he reports no employment. Last payment made on this account was in January of 2022. Front of the court recommends that a reasonable bond be set in this matter and it be scheduled for hearing on November 15th, 2023 at 8.45 a.m. before this court. Okay. Mr. Warges, you're before the court charged with civil contempt of court due to your failure to appear at a prior hearing as a result of your failure to pay child support. The purpose of this hearing is to set a bond that would assure your tenants at the next hearing on November 15, 2023 at 8.45 a.m. You will get notice of that in writing. Are you able to post a bond, sir? Uh, possibly. I have to make a couple phone calls. Okay. Well, the court does note you have 13 uh, prior bench warrants in this matter. Uh, the court does note that you've been before this court many times before as well, and uh, they haven't paid now in... Uh, He's going on uh, two years. So the court's taking all of that into consideration. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set your bond in the amount of $1,500. If you're able to post that, you'd be able to be released. Do you have any questions? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all I have today. Okay, I, I see you changed rooms. Change it. Oh, since... Since Monday? But, no, yeah, you're usually in the room with a lot more windows and kind of a porch or something. Oh, yeah, it's getting cold outside. Ah, okay, okay. It you got to move, you gotta move inside now. Out. Okay. Well, have <laughs> a good have day. You. Thank you. We'll you too. You okay, let's move on to... Um, on the first one, that Melisa. Mal yes, I do have the... Uh, the orders did arrive okay. after I sent you the... Okay, list. that's, they that's, are why there. I, that's what I was asking. Yes. All right, please unmute both of you are ready for your hearing. Ma'am, please unmute. Yeah. We can begin. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Okay, this is 2023-1263 DM James Malizi versus Sarah Malizi. It is Wednesday, November 8th, 2023 at 8.38 a.m. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. I'll go to you, Good morning. Go to you first, ma'am. Uh, you are, uh, in this case, are, are you disputing or contesting anything in this case? No. no. Okay. okay. Mr. Malizi, what we'll do is have you raise your right hand, be sworn in. We'll take some testimony and we'll proceed. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. 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 Okay, sir, do you uh, have the uh, script that we would have provided you? Yes. Okay. Yes. You can go through that now, but you don't have to state your address if you don't wish. Okay. Okay. My full name is James, name is James Dave, Dave, and Melissa. I am married to defendant on August 12, 2014, in Colorado Springs, Colorado, US. I filed the complaint of divorce on, and um, I apologize. I don't have that date exact. That, I believe that's it's fine. in. That's fine. Thank Go you, ahead. I lived in Michigan for 180 days in Calhoun County for 10 days immediate prior to filing the complaint. When I filed my complaint for divorce, all the statements were true. All the statements in my complaint for divorce are still true today. There has been a breakdown of marriage, relationship, 
such that the objects of patrimony have been destroyed and their remains. No reasonable likelihood that the marriage can be preserved. I do not believe that there is any possibility of reconciliation. Um, my wife is currently not pregnant. And uh, we have two children together. Ari Malizia is nine and Ryan Malizia is seven. Um, I have read all the terms of the proposed judgment of the divorce and I agree with them. And I ask that the court grant us absolute judgment of divorce. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Court will find that the testimony does establish the statutory basis. There has been a showing there's been a breakdown of the marital relationship. The defendant has appeared and stated that she does not contest or dispute anything. As a result, the court will enter the judgment as submitted in this matter, as well as the UCSO. That will conclude your case. You are divorced. Best of luck to both of you. I hope everything works out. And uh, you're free to go. Have a good day. Thank, Thank, you, you, sir. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Let's go on to our other case. In this case, a uh, judge, as you have on the list, the um, the minor has graduated high school is 18, so there's no UCSO. Right. So just the consent. So please unmute, ma'am. We're ready for your hearing now. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. This is case 2023-1106, DM, Megan Hoovener versus Corey Hoovener. It is Wednesday, November 8th, 2023 at 841 a.m. Defendant is not here. Good morning, Ms. Hoovener. How are you? Wonderful, sir. How are you? Great. We're going to take some uh, testimony from you. So if you would raise your right hand, we'll have you sworn in, then we'll proceed. Ma'am, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yeah. And ma'am, do you have the uh, script that we would have provided you? Yes, sir. Okay. You can go through that now, but you don't need to uh, state your address if you don't wish. Okay. My spouse and I were married on December 24th, 2015 in Marshall, Michigan, by a person duly authorized to perform marriages. I was a resident of state of Michigan for at least 180 days of the Calhoun County for at least 10 days prior to filing the complaint for divorce. Now before the court, the allegations in the complaint were true when I filed it and are still true today. My spouse and I ceased living together as husband and wife on uh, April of 2023. There are zero minor children born in this marriage and I am not pregnant. There has been a breakdown of marriage relationship to the extent that the bonds of mat matrimony have been destroyed and there remains no reasonable likelihood that the marriage can be preserved. If the court were not to grant a judgment of divorce, I would not resume a marital relationship with my spouse. I wish to have my maiden slash former name of Babbitt restored to me. The reason for the breakdown of the marriage is I became disabled um, and the disability tore us apart. Okay. Court will find that the testimony does establish the statutory basis. There has been a showing there's been a breakdown of the marital relationship. The file does appear to be in order. I'll just ask you, ma'am, you have uh, submitted a consent judgment, meaning that the defendant has signed that. Do you recognize that as his signature? Yes, sir. Okay. The court will then enter the consent judgment of divorce. That will conclude your matter. You are divorced. Best of luck to you, ma'am. I hope everything works out for you. Uh,